Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we come on your Sabbath. We come on this Sabbath, a Sabbath that we have never seen before and a Sabbath we shall never see again. Father, one Sabbath closer to heaven. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of coming before you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of coming through another week. The good elders said earlier, some of us have come through some trials and tribulations this week, but Father, you have brought us through. Some of us have come through some times that we thought uh, a door would never open, but you opened that door or you opened those doors, and we just want to thank you. So tonight on this Sabbath, as we open up your hour, as we open up this hour on your Sabbath hours, we ask, Father, for those who are present, for those who are on the web, for those who are listening throughout the world, that you be heard, that you be seen. Now, Lord, be in my head and my thinking, be in my eyes and my looking, be in my ears and my hearing, be in my mouth and on my tongue and my speaking, that our Lord, most importantly, be in my heart and my understanding. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Revelation 21.6. Revelation 21.6. Ably read by the good elder. And I'm just going to reread that. He said, Jesus speaking now. He said, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of water of life. Revelation 21, 6. It's another re week down already. Another week down already, and I have a question for you. And my question tonight is, are you connected? Are you connected? Recently, a Midwest hospital found out it had not been connected. That is, after 35 years of service in this hospital, distinguished service, wonderful hospital, this uncertain or unnamed hospital had rallied around upon its water safety equipment in case of a fire. Let me explain. Surprisingly, the water main had never been attached to the city's water supply. Ah yes, the pipes that led from the building extending four feet underground and there it stopped. For 35 years, the medical staff and patients had placed confidence in an unconnected system. 35 years. There was a false security here. Are you connected? The cost or the costly equipment, the polished valves, the well-placed outlets, everything was more than adequate except for one thing that was most needful. There was no water because they were not connected. Jesus says here in Revelation, to him that is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. For it is done, I am the Alpha and the Omega, he said. I am the beginning and the end. To be connected, we have to start to be plugged in to Jesus Christ. To be connected, we need to know that there is no other way to stand in this time, in these days and time, but to be plugged in to Jesus Christ. The source that we see here, the, the ministry of my brother tonight, I thought about how he played so wonderfully, amen? amen? How this microphone, how everything is plugged in, how you heard what he played. Now, if by chance 
something happens and I went over there and unplugged the system, and if my friend would just turn down the volume, what would happen? I'm disconnected. So many times we find ourselves disconnected from God. We think we are connected. We ought to be connected. We allow ourselves to have false precepts. To know that because I am in the church, because I am where I stand, because of who I am, because of the office I hold. Hello? We think, well, I'm connected. Because we find ourselves every week in the house of the Lord, I feel, or we think we feel, that we are connected. But to be truly connected is not just to come into the halls of the church. For we find out that the church is not really this building or any building. Let me ask you this question, and I'm sure you know the answer. What is or who is the church? We are, you are, you're correct. Because if we are not connected to the source, how can we go out and tell others about this Christ that we know about, or we should know about? Connection is God's abling device for us to find out where we are in life where I am, not to beat someone down and tell them where they're not or where they should be. But first of all, where am I, Lord? David says, Lord, purge me. Purge me. I, I, when you read that Psalm, Psalm 51, when you read that Psalm, there is no way that, that you can read that Psalm and, and, and say to yourself, oh, well, that's just David's problem. Or that's the experience that David only had. Somewhere down the line, we had some type of an experience like David had. Ah, it might not be exactly the way he had it, had mercy. But somewhere in our lives, we have had that disconnect from God. So somewhere in our lives, we have to find ourselves searching maybe in the darkness. You've done it before. The light went out or you tripped over the cord and you're trying to go somewhere in the house or wherever you may be. You really don't want to go and turn all the lights on. So you search, you find the cord and you're looking, you say, now I know this plug is somewhere here on this wall. So you find yourself fishing on the wall. I know you've done it before because I've done it. And you're looking and you're trying to find and, and finally you get frustrated sometimes because you never find the connection. And all that time, you're looking and you're frustrated. Here's the need. Here's the way we find ourselves. Each and every day, we find ourselves ready to be connected, hoping to be connected, fishing to be connected. But how to be connected is through our prayer lives. How to be connected is through the life of service and reading God's word. So when we find ourselves disconnected, mm, when I find myself disconnected, somewhere down the line, hear me now, somewhere down the line, I have stepped beyond the bounds of God's word. I have either placed it away from me or I have decided, well, prayer is not exactly everything I needed at this time. So many times our lives are so rushed that we find ourselves not in the connecting mode of prayer the way we should be. Oh yes, we're rushed. We're rushed to come to church. We're rushed to do our duties. We're rushed to go to Pathfinders on Sunday to bring the kids, hello. Uh, we're rushed to do this and that and the other, A-Y. Then, Lord, have mercy, don't start the week. Oh, Monday is not one of those days that I determined myself to be the best of driver. 
because I, I because of the weekend, I'm, I'm, I overslept maybe, and, and, and I'm still cranky, and I rush to do some type of prayer. Lord, thank you. Wake me up. Thank you for waking me up. Da-da-da. And I'm out the house. And I'm on the road, and I'm going to, well, I'll talk about myself, and I'm going to, because I can't really talk about you. I'm going to the GC or wherever you may work, and somebody, the devil has it set up all the time. I'm talking about being connected. And he has it set up where all of a sudden someone cuts you off, have mercy. And you, 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 you're trying to be a saint. You're talking, you, you're thinking back of what Pastor John said Sabbath morning and you're just having a praise report in your, in your, in your car. You're having a hallelujah time until that person cut you off. <laughs> or maybe when you got to work, that boss that you really can't stand, I mean, you dislike. <laughs> or that person you just uh, cannot understand where they're coming from. Those, those are the times that the devil really tests us. Those are the times that he really throws his darts at us because we think we're connected, but we're not. Being connected is knowing that there are outward trappings in life. There are certain times that we look at ourselves and we say there are necessary times that we have to sit back Relax and let God do his work. There are certain times that we find ourselves looking and we hear me now, we say to ourselves, oh, yeah, this, uh, this is something that I, I should know. I'm connected. I, I love the Lord. I go to church every Sabbath. I study my Sabbath school lesson. I do it all the time. You hear that all the time? You hear yourself saying that sometimes? You've heard it from others. But truly, are we connected? This leads me to this question that most people are asking. Certainly, your life has all the necessary outward trappings. So how can I be connected when I'm faced with so many traps? How can I be connected to God when so many times I make a right or I make a left or I go forward or I step back and there's so many traps set for me by the devil? How can I be connected? And how are we connected? We are connected when we serve God. We are connected, as I stated, when we dig in his word. I challenge you tonight, as I have done, being in the gospel ministry, being an elder at my church, being a servant of the Lord with the Most High, being with God's people almost every day of the week. You need to be connected. It is a blessing to serve the Lord at the GC. It is a blessing to serve the Lord wherever you may work. But there's something about being connected to the Lord. There's something about knowing that your life has the necessary outward appearance of being connected. Because there are a lot of outward trappings. You have a home, food, television, radio, Clothes, children, neighbors, bills, more bills, a lot of bills, tons of people calling you, telemarketers, creditors. So we find ourselves in all this wrapped, and sometimes we're so wrapped in life that we forget that we are connected to God. Oh, we don't totally forget. Mind you now, we, we're, we're, we're saints of the Most High. We don't totally forget that we're connected with the Lord. But those times that we really need help, 
we sometimes have spiritual amnesia and we forget, as Moses says, and as Ellen White pins in her writings, yet we forget how God has led us in the past. So I'm here tonight to tell you this. You may have this home, you may have all the food in your pantry, you may have the television, you may have the house, you may have the radio, the clothes, the cars. You may have everything that you think you need of this world. The trappings are there. But there's one person who we truly need and you are blessed to call him Jesus, Savior, my friend. A friend that sticketh closer than a brother. For those of you who grew up with brothers and sisters, for those of you who uh, are blessed to have a brother or a sister or brothers or sisters, think back. Think back on those days as you all grew up, knowing that you had your brother or your sister's back. No one could mess with your brother. No one could mess with your sister. No one, oh my goodness, no one could mess with you because maybe your big brother would step in to handle the business. So here we look and we say that we are connected to our big brother, our big spiritual brother, Jesus Christ, who will always step in to help you no matter what the situation is in your life. The only way and the only way that we can really truly know how we are spiritually with him is to stay connected with him. Stay connected with his words. Stay connected with everything he has for us. On the other hand, if you aren't connected to the Savior, you should know how much he loves you and what he has done so you might be saved. I don't think there's anyone here tonight that needs to hear that sentence, that needs to hear that thought. I'm sure and truly I'm sure that everyone here tonight is connected with the Lord somehow. But if there is one who is here with us tonight or maybe listening or seeing us on the internet, if you are not connected with the Lord as your Savior, let it be known tonight that you can look to the cradle of Bethlehem, look upon the cross of Calvary, stand before his tomb of resurrection. And finally know this, looking someday toward that day, looking toward that second coming, and as I always tell people as I close tonight, how do we stay connected? How are we connected with the Lord? And how do we know that we shall be connected with him eternally? When that great day comes and when we're all standing, wherever we may be standing, wherever we may be, when we look up toward the eastern sky, what a great day that shall be. When we shall say, lo, this is our God, he has come to save us. And Pastor John, I look forward to that great sweet voice that says, well done, thou good and faithful servants. Now you've been faithful over a few things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Are you connected tonight? Stay connected, my friends. This Jesus has done for you so the Holy Spirit might connect you with your Father in heaven. 
This Jesus, this Jesus will keep you connected with your family and with your family of faith. May God's richest blessings be upon you as a church. May God continue to connect you daily, hourly, moment by moment. May his blessings be with you. And for you on the internet, may you learn that staying connected with Jesus is an awesome, awesome joy. We look forward to that great day. We look forward to living with him and being connected with him forever and ever and ever and ever, world without end. May God bless you. Our Father, we thank you for this opportunity of knowing that we can be connected to you. So Heavenly Father, thank you for the life you have given us through the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus. Help us to be connected and remain connected to you through him who is our lifeline, our lifeline. May you be pleased with everything we shall do in your Sabbath hours. Bless this church as they go forward. Bless the dear pastor and his family. And we thank you, Lord, once again for the opportunity of being here, worshiping with your family on your holy Sabbath. We ask and we praise your holy name and we ask for these gracious favors in the sweet and humbling name of Jesus Christ. Amen.